Good day, everyone. Though this is a virtual event, it's indeed a privilege to speak to everyone. This is clearly a challenging time for all of us and the world. Where all of us communicate, collaborate, engage in commerce, educate our kids, perform health checks, almost everything has become a digital norm. Much of what is happening during the pandemic continues to accelerate the digital revolution. Obviously, the spotlight of today is on digital telecom. There is universal recognition that technology has brought together, making a genuine difference. Connectivity has made the world smaller and like I said, brought together and made it an interactive place. Now imagine living in the world of COVID, unconnected, incommunicado. I want to apologize to the millions of people in our nation that are still unconnected being in the 2G world. By the way, these are nearly 400 million strong till in 2G. We cannot, as an industry, fail to have this addressed. The world has adapted reasonably well, I would say, to this new normal. We still have millions who are at a disadvantage due to the businesses and activities not yet being normal. The least we can do as an industry, as a connectivity service provider, is to step up to deliver reliable, affordable connectivity across all of India. Of course, in the current scenario, the home has clearly become the hub. Where home is literally where people are working, studying, playing, and living their lives. And connecting homes to other homes, connecting families, connecting things and places, these are all part of the new digital telco, and more so with Geo in India. Even when we look at the world before COVID, the global economy and the India's economy in particular has been increasingly influenced, I would say, by the digital moment, as India continues to stake its position in the new economy. Now, for us in India, the impact of the geo effect has been evident across India whether it's con uh, covering industries and or multiple verticals. Geo obviously did not launch a metro or I would say urban only 4G network. We launched 4G with more coverage than 2G. And it's evident. We know as millions of the workforce were coming back to rural India from urban India, we were there. Geo was there to ensure that these millions and their families stay connected during these difficult times. And we do know that we need to do more on this front, again, collectively as an industry. As we have all realized, the fundamental building block of the digital economy, the new age economy, and its platforms is clearly connectivity. Let me now share briefly on some of the key areas in which we are seeing the digital transformation and disruption. In the new world of COVID, all of us know the most obvious industry that is in transformation is clearly healthcare. The adoption of, I would say, digital and the use of uh, the brain machine interfaces clearly have the potential to provide all of us a healthier lifestyle and combat, I would say, COVID, like pandemics, the power of digital is fundamentally disrupting the age-old fabric of 15 years to create a new drug or even a new vaccine. Meanwhile, as we continue to fight the pandemic with digital platforms playing an important and critical role, the whole education system has been forced to adapt globally. In India, our impact on this 
has not too gone well either, with 3 million teachers and about 15 million students being impacted. However, we all have to appreciate the teachers and the students and school as they have clearly adapted by going online as much as possible, whether it is through simple text messages, whether it's through video calls or a hybrid program. Of course, as I said earlier, the challenging part are the ones that have been still unconnected. This is why we have to get India to be 2G mode. And we need right of ways and we need the right incentives and policies too for the operators to continue to invest in fiber and connectivity. And this cannot be just the role of the central government, rather, but also for every state government to ensure that no school, no healthcare, and no child is left unconnected. This is the new digital movement. We need to create incentivizing operators to invest. Now, on other great front that I want to talk to you about, it's possible that the flight to Mars could actually become a reality within our timeline. Now, all of this innovation, I would say, is driven by the power of compute, of AI-centric chipsets, and digital platforms of various types, and custom specific ASICs. And this presents a unique opportunity for us to work towards as a nation, local innovation and development in the chip and semiconductor industry. So that we are pushing the limits of compute, AI and machine learning and be a leader, I would say, in these areas. Now let's come to the most talked about topic of today in our circle, which is 5G. We are hearing of 5G every day. In fact, the speed of 5G, I would say, is such that there appears to be claims being made every other hour on 5G, on what is being done and what is to be done. Yes, we as a nation are not where we would like it to be in terms of spectrum allocations for 5G, but these do take time and we want to be embracing these technologies at the right time with the full power of the end-to-end -end ecosystem. Leadership, in my view, is not just about announcements. It's about having these technologies offer the right impact on a nation like ours, where these technologies can fundamentally accelerate the next phase of digital shifts. We definitely need to ensure that what we have done with 4G 5G is not a privileged launch. It has to leverage the full potential of 5G towards universal connectivity so that all of India can get this connectivity, whether it's with low latency, high availability, high bandwidth and affordability, where everyone can enjoy the benefits of 5G. We have the privilege or the opportunity to deliver on 5G, to deliver on the digital pervasiveness. And for that, we should consider enabling, I would say, smaller footprint radios across street poles where right of ways, power availability, access for fiber are all enabled. As it is evident, in addition to the technology system, all of us being in the telecom space have realized that 5G infrastructure pieces are very important. And access to the street poles, to rooftops, to tower tops, with access to reliable and affordable power, along with the fiber backhaul, is actually a big must. Now on 5G, we are continuing to hear about ORAN, Open RAN, and other perspectives. As I have stated earlier, we are a big believer in 5G and open. Personally, I love everything about ORAN and we are fully supportive of ORAN along with Verizon, AT&T and others. 
we are committed to Iran, but I also am a realist. When there are claims of large-scale Oran-based networks being launched, these are what I would call brute force RAM. If I may even use the term BF RAM, and this is not Oran. So in the brute, brute force BF RAM, the approach is for the operators to work with respective vendors and tech providers and use, I would say, a big sledgehammer and force these vendors to open certain aspects of the technology and use them to get limited interoperability functions. This is great, but remember, what we need to have ideally is a standard-based ORAN solution as soon as possible. And that is why I believe we are presently in what I call as a transition phase that is moving from BFRAN to ORAN as ORAN continues to mature. And for ORAN, we are certain that with the trusted partners and trusted nations, we will realize the full potential. As recently reiterated actually by US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and in fact, I had the pleasure to interact with Chairman Pai just recently, and he just reiterated the need for us to all support ORAN, and we are committed to supporting ORAN. And none other than our own PM, our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji, through the Atma Nirbar Bharat Initiative, let me reiterate that we will work with all relevant members within India so that India is self-reliant on key technologies. It is evident that India, we have seen, has become the new destination for global investors. And be assured, we will drive this momentum further so that India is indeed the new destination for innovation, for growth of new technology and digital platforms such that digital telecoms not just becomes the enablers of technology, but creators encouraging local development and manufacturing. Now, specifically, I would say on 5G, the fundamental architecture of 5G, the way I see it, will be open along with open interfaces, disaggregated and modular, distributed with having edge centers or edge data centers, cloud and API centric, where the capabilities, I would say, of programmability, automation, and security are inherent to the design and build. And this is where, in fact, ORAN will fit in and the industry and all of us to work closely towards realizing the full potential of ORAN. Now, with respect to uh, this being a digital, telco being the focus, I know I have to weigh in specifically on the digital telco. Clearly, as a digital telco, it's important for us as the digital operator, if you will, to handle in real time the changing needs of users in a digital society, be it from individuals, be it uh, from Kiranas to large enterprises, so that digital telcos are part and parcel of the transformation journey. And one of the key tenets and attributes of the digital telco, in my view, is to be 100% digitally engaged with the users. This helps to ensure seamless continuity to every user, even during the unprecedented times we live in. Remember, during the um, COVID lockdown, Services to a huge number of feature phones, i.e. Uh, um, 2G phones, got impacted merely because neither the users could actually go, recharge centers were open. And it's important that the digital telco caters to these, what I would call in today's world, essential needs because telecom is now an essential service. A geo digital engagement is one of our basic capabilities 
actually from the beginning. And we have been able to cater to these users. And hence, India to be 2G mode is an important criteria. And I do not think digital telco and 5G is about identifying another one or two killer apps. It's actually about becoming an agile digital services provider to be able, I would say, to handle the changing needs of the users in real time. That, to me, is Geo, i.e. the platform model, where we can enable, work with, and co-create, I would say, new opportunities, new experiences, and emerging technologies and businesses, all fundamental to enhancing the digital life of every Indian. As you all, you all have actually seen, we have put the platforms at the forefront of Geo's growth strategy. We are, have partnered with and we are continuing to create an ecosystem with some of the leading platform and component providers of the world. And the recent investments to India is a key testament of that. Now, because we are working with the best in the industry, we have the ability to accelerate India's emergence, not just as a regional player, but as a global influencer and leader. We in India, and we all know this, have now over 17 million MSMEs. And of this, as we all know, 95% of these are micro enterprises. And almost over half of our labor force is employed by small and micro businesses. Now, bringing technology to these smaller businesses is absolutely critical to the health of our economy. And we as an industry have a big role to play by working with our policymakers to ensure that our economy is continuously re-energized. Now, with Geo having remarkably done well in the mobile broadband space, there is a need for the geo effect to come into the homes. Code has accelerated, as I highlighted earlier, for broadband in the homes, and we are all experiencing it. Like I said earlier, as we work, as we school, and we do our social connectivity, these are all shifted home. And home is clearly the hub for the new community. Now, despite all the progress we have kind of, so kind of, I would say, so-called wired connectivity of broadband to less than 20 million of the 216 million households. Now we are committed to change this. I think we as an industry should be committed to change this. We as a nation want to be committed to change this. India, in my view, has an opportunity to become the new Wakanda of the world. And as always, we are an aspirational nation. However, we do not need to create a privileged Wakanda. Our Wakanda to be all-inclusive, where every Indian across the length and breadth of our great nation, and every Karana, and every Taluka, and every business needs to have a critical role to play in our Wakanda. And as we build a new digital telecom, we will have to continue as an industry to work with all the stakeholders, from the farmers, to the coconut climbers in Kerala, to the masons, to the kiranas, to the industrial houses, and of course with the government, all in one as a single partnerships towards making India the new Wakanda of the world. Thank you very much, everyone.